Okay, so uh, welcome back. If you're new here, this is a tutorial on how to get point to click. Uh, this will show you how you get a ca your character in Unity to uh, go to a location that you click on. Currently, we have a first person controller and um, a really small scene setup. We just have your player being able to walk over to an item, and if your mouse is on top of it, um, it's far too sensitive right now. If your mouse is on top of it, when you right click, it will delete the item and it will delete the item. So. Uh, we're actually just going to delete that right now. We still have our scripts because it's in the pickup and we have our two items down here um, Then we're just going to leave them in the scene uh, They they can just be left the way they are they don't need to be modified in any other way But in our first tutorial we created a main camera an orthographic camera. Now we want to reselect that And we want to click W if you're new to this though all I did was create a camera, set the rotation to 30, 45, and projection to orthographic. If it's too short, you'll notice that the depth and the viewport um, for the near and far, you'll see if I increase that, you'll see it, the camera preview will eventually start disappearing. Um, but we don't want that. We had it nicely set up, so we're going to use that. So we're going to click W with our transform tool. Oops, what did I just click on? Um, we're just going to move our camera up to a position where we can see our scene. Now this is way too like far away. Um, as you can see our mountains are like no clipping so we're gonna have to edit this again. So we're gonna, so as you can see the scene like disappears with that so we're gonna push that out and we'll just, that won't make a difference. Depth, nope, uh, is it clipping plane, size, that's the one. Uh, here we are. So if you ever played Rhymes to Capo, this is where it got inspired from just because it's isometric with cubes so it's not really hugely inspired now if we go into our game we can see we have our two cubes in isometric view with no shadows on them with no shadows on them uh cast shadows which are uh point light uh only directional lights have shadows and forward rendering okay that's very true um because we haven't baked the scene yet there won't be any shadows but if we uh create a new light which will be a uh, point light um we go out into the scene, uh, not point light, the uh, directional light. Um, we can reduce that, it's far too strong. Disable the point light with a little tick in the inspector and um, make this blue as per usual and soft shadows. And now we can see our cubes have little shadows. Now it doesn't matter where the point light goes, if you rotate this you can see the shadows move with them. So we're just going to um, set this at 30-45 so it's even with the camera. And if you do that you'll know yourself that you won't be able to see any shadows because it's at 30-45. So we're going to increase this to 30-30 and we should see a little bit of sh shadow in the corner. It looks a bit better that way. Um, maybe set this to 45, I wonder what that looks like. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so. Um, that's our scene right now if you wanted shadows, but uh, it looks much better with our point light. So that's how you can make your scene look pretty. I'm going to do a whole tutorial on baking the scene to make it look really good. It's literally five minutes and you can get your scene looking fantastic, but I don't want to cover that right now. Right now we're just going to cover um, uh, getting a, a, character, a character walking around the map. So we have our cube here. This cube will be our character. Uh, we're just going to make him a bit taller. R. Uh, or you can use any of these at the top and um, it doesn't need to be that tall and we'll just move him over here now this is our character this will be our player so we're just going to tag him as player I'm going to rename it from cube to player and th that's all we have um, we're going to go into textures and we're going to make this one what color are we not used we're going to make our character blue you can just click, drag it on the scene or drag it in the inspector it doesn't matter um, so if we go into game right now we can see that's our player, these are the two items we're going to get him to pick up. So we're going to attach um, a nav mesh agent to this guy and our nav mesh agent radius will have to be set to somewhere, it's usually pretty accurate, yeah it's about accurate. Um, it's just your uh, your actual your player, It's gonna. this is the, the mapping, the artificial intelligence side of it, it's really quite cool these new nav mesh agents in Unity 4.6. Um, uh, there's no, all this speed and acceleration stuff can be uh, edited different um, later on. I've changed it to high quality because uh, the the better the quality, the better the better it will, it will run. Uh, so now we're just gonna create a C sharp script, and this is gonna be uh, what will I call it? Click to move. Now they have new canvases, 
in Unity, which is up here, you can create new canvases very, very easily. What we're going to implement is in the next tutorial is when you click, there's going to be a canvas that loads around the area. And there's also going to be a little menu screen as well. So um, that'll be what we'll be working on next so you can get a sneak peek. Right, we have our click to move. I said I wasn't going to write all this out, but um, I've, I've changed my mind. And I actually, no, I haven't changed my mind. I'm going to uh, pause the video and uh, write it and then go through it. Okay, so we're back and I've written the script for you guys. Um, I'm not going to put it in the description. You're going to have to write it so you know what's happening. It's the exact same as our previous pickup script with the Raycast, but instead we are uh, setting our destination. So we're going to require a component nav mesh agent. If whatever this script is attached to does not have a nav mesh agent already in it, it will create one for you so we won't get any errors. Then we're going to create a nav mesh agent itself, which is our navigation agent, which is um, what we'll be using to uh, navigate around the map. And as soon as it starts, we're going to assign this, um, the nav mesh agent that's attached to our character to navigation agent so it, it works if you have multiple navigation agents on one character at the same time um, then we're going to uh, call our updates so every single frame is going to call the move um, the move function and if the input gets mouse button up is set to zero means that you've left clicked um, then the raycast will be called and it's not the raycast won't be called out with the left click allowing you to uh, keep resource efficient when you're loading up the game. Um, and then it's going to call the physics agent, which is the raycast again, and it's going to cast a ray out to 500. Um, you can set this yourself if you wanted to. Uh, in there you can just call it uh, distance. And then up here we can just call the uh, just do, oops, public um, and distance. And then in the inspector we can set that. Uh, that distance like we did before but uh, 500 will work because our camera is not attached to anything so uh, we don't actually need that implemented right now into the scene and then our navigation agent which is our the one that's attached to our controller our character our player um, will set the destination to the, to the point that you that was from the raycast so wherever your mouse was pointing the raycast shot that laser beam um, where your mouse is it will set the destination of the navigation agent which is your player to that location so we'll save that now that was so much quicker and me typing that up and you hear in the mechanical keyboard i go over here now to our uh, player we're just going to drag our click to move guy over here and we can see this is us got that implemented now um we don't want like a plane uh, right now if we click play it uh it won't work it will work because we baked the scene in our previous tutorial but if you did not follow the previous tutorial, here is this one for you. So um, the rules of the bake in the scene for this is we're just going to add another, I suppose we'll add another cube. Um, now this is our wall. We're going to have to navigate around this wall to get to our cube. Now the thing about baking the scenes is if, it, if this is an object that will never be moved, then I need to set it as static and we're going to call it wall. It doesn't matter what I call it, but we're going to call it wall for the sake of argument. Um, we'll set the color uh, to... We can set it to gray, but you probably won't see it. Will you see it in the in the game? Yeah, but it's not great. Okay, what we'll do is we'll do that and we'll set this one to... So you can see the different things we've got going on. Um, so this is uh, uh, set as a static variable, which means it's not going to move anywhere. It's a static variable, a static object. It means it's not going to move anywhere in our scene. Um, so we select the wall because we know it's not going anywhere in the scene. We click navigation. Anything that's static in the scene must be selected. Go to bake. Our radius we're going to set to about 0.2. This is how close the player can get to this wall um, before like moving around it. Then we click bake and this will just essentially create a whole navigation area that our player can walk around. Um, as you can see here, we see that little this marking we have around. That's the 0 0.2 that we changed. So the player can't get any closer than that. The player can technically walk on top of this um, uh, this this uh, uh, wall, but he'll never be able to get up there because he can't jump yet. So if we click play, we're going to be thrown into the game. 
and if we left click our player will move to where we point him to if we go up if we click on the wall he's just gonna hit the wall uh yeah he's gonna hit the wall and he's not gonna be able to go through it but he'll actually just go around it if i click the other side so if i click over here he's gonna transport himself over there now no your scene is gonna be set up differently if this doesn't work you need to set this variable uh, to bigger than 500 or you can just do what i did and set it in the inspector but i've set it to 500 because i knew it would work okay so as you can see here we have our wall walking up to it we want to get around it we want to get to this cube so we're going to click on the cube the nav agent is going to go to that raycast hit point if i right click it's going to uh not do anything because i haven't attached the script to, to the player yet so we're going to back into the inspector click our player go to scripts pick up that we wrote in the last tutorial uh, distance to item will be 10 play again and this will be us being able to navigate around this wall nice and smoothly go over to this item right click um, and pick up the item uh, but it's not because I likely um, this is mouse button zero and that's mouse button one so if I uh, right click it should pick up the item and we wrote it out in the console so we can see anything that happens when we right click distance to item ah this is why uh, this distance item is only 10 that's not going to work because our camera remember it takes the raycast from the camera and not local like not from the player so it's shooting a raycast from the camera over here this is 10 um if we know 500 works because that's what our player set as so if we go back in here and we right click and it should delete yeah there we go uh if we go in here we can see item hit walk over here right click it's deleted as well so just to go over what happened there was we have our uh, pickup in here which is the distance set to the item which is the same thing which is from the camera main um, we're going to add a, a really a short script into this camera which will allow us to if we make the uh, the camera a child of the player you're gonna get seasick like this is crazy it will follow the player around always at that angle um, if you want that then perfect but that's not great like you, that's that's not what you want. Uh, so we're gonna implement a r the shortest script I think I've ever actually no, it's maybe not the shortest script I've written, but uh, it's a really short script in C sharp, and it's gonna be called camera follow. And in this script, the camera is gonna follow this player, um, player around. Is it loaded up? Camera follow, double click, uh, and this will be attached to the camera. So we'll just throw that in there now, and I will write it. Very short, okay. Very very short script. So the transform is our player, transform being uh, the movement. Um, public float is just a double. Um, it can be zero. It has a decimal value. An integer only has a whole number of values, so you can't do a float. You can do a float as being one point zero and it'll be one or 1.2 and it'll be 1.2 or if you do one it'll be 1.0 um if but if you do uh, an integer as 5.6 it'll round it to five so it's not going to work uh that's the same for every pro program language in java it's the exact same integer uh but i use double in java a lot floats a bigger number uh so it doesn't mean too much so every single frame is going to um get the position of our player and then it's going to take that position of our player um, our current player position and slowly pan around sorry not the player transform position is the current the camera's position right now because that's the that's the current position the camera's looking at and the player position which is from the transform element up here it's a bit weird because it's transform transform so um, camera position player position slowly pan around to this to this uh, angle so our player position um, will be moved We'll, we'll move and then our camera will follow it at this speed so uh, that's it written um, I don't know how quick did I not set the I thought I set it as a I wrote five there but I'm pretty sure if I just 
I'll do that. Yeah, so I can set it in here. I wrote five, so we're just gonna set it to six. But it, I'll show you the difference between them. So we click play now. No errors. Okay, so uh, my Unity crashed there, and it was pretty much. I just had to create this whole scene again, so this whole tutorial I just had to create again, so it looks a bit different, that's why. Uh, remember in your main camera to uh, set the, the player uh, in the transform component, um, so I'm, uh, here we are, player. Okay, so obviously I just had to create this again, you won't have this issue, but I just had to create this whole scene again. Um, so we have our main camera, click and hold our player from the inspector, drag it into there. We're at smooth 5.0, I'm just gonna save it. Um, we're gonna click play, it should load up, and there we go, wherever I move, the camera will slowly follow the player without rotating, and it looks much smoother. And I go over here and I right click, and it's picked something up, and I right click, and it's picked that one up. So we have our little player walking around now. It looks much better. Now if I move this smooth to one, you can see it will like slowly, and it's just, easy ozy if I move it to 20 it's instant you know so you can't even see the, the thing move around uh, if you're not happy with the player speed uh, you can change that just through the nav mesh agent in the, under the player so we can just click nav mesh agent um, speed uh, angular speed is going to be really fast because we can get them to turn around much quicker so you can see much quicker moving around the map now and he'll he no clip through that. Wait a sec. Why did he do that? I don't know. He must have just gotten. I don't know what happened there. But you can see the angle speed goes out wide and comes back in, and then eventually gets to his point. So at the moment he's having a thing like when you drop a penny around a cylindrical thing, he has too much momentum and can't slow down enough. So thanks a lot for watching the tutorial. Be sure to check in for the next one where we'll be implementing a 2D uh, character controller.